Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from ExilAutomation.com and this is part 6 of our Appium with Java video series. And in this part, we're going to start work with web applications using Appium, meaning we're going to use web browsers of Android Mobile and start automating that browsers using Appium. So before starting this part, please watch part 5 since in part 5 we discussed how to configure your Appium Eclipse and Visual Studio emulator for Android in greater detail. All right. So working with web applications. So let's start automating the mobile application using Appium. For doing that, we need to change the desired capabilities and we need to identify the controls of the web application and then start writing code for the relative controls and performing the operations. So let's not waste our time and flip to Eclipse. So this is my Eclipse IDE and this is a project which we worked in part 5 and also we tried to execute it using Visual Studio Emulator for Android. And this is the Visual Studio Emulator for Android and this is my Appium up and running, right? So if I select run as and run test in gtest, you can see that your Visual Studio Emulator for Android will quickly start to execute the test which you have written. So this is the code which we wrote in the last video of this video series. So in this video, as I already told, we're going to work with the web-based applications or browser-based applications. So for that, we need to somehow change these desired capabilities. So since we are not going to use the calculator, I'm just going to remove this code and I'm going to change this app package to maybe browser name. Right, so this is the capability name, and instead of com.android.calculator, I'm going to use just browser. That's it. And you don't have to set anything in the app activity because app activity is something not required. And as I already told, this cap dot set capability as an AVD is also not required because we're not going to use the out of the box emulator for. Android. So I'm just going to delete that. So now you can see you have only two desired capabilities, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start automating this web application. So as always, most of the people prefer to go with Chrome. So I'm also going to use Chrome. So before that, I will tell you that I'm using Windows 10 operating system. And let me show you a quick view of how Cortana is also working. Hey, Cortana. Can you open Chrome for me? Sure thing. Starting Google Chrome. See, I just misspelled, but still, Cortana is very intelligent to open things for me. All right, I'm not calling you now. <laughs> All right, so the Cortana has just opened the Chrome for me. And as I already told, we're going to automate the Google website. And we're going to just start writing the code for this particular search box. And then we're going to use this uh, uh, operation for performing the search. Uh, let's say I'm going to search for execute automation. All right, and I'm going to click the search button. So this page should come up in the mobile browser. So uh, the object name will not change for your computer based mobile browser as well as your Android based mobile browser. So the object name still remains same, right? So if I see the inspect element, you can see that the name of the particular text box is going to be Q, as you can see here, right? And the button name is actually BTNG. Since I've been using this for a pretty long time, I, I remember the names of these controls. So I'm just going to close it. And then I'm just going to delete this for this full code, right? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to call this driver dot. There is something called get method. So here you need to pass the URL for your web browser. That you're going to pass, right? So I just uh, pass the google.com website. And then, so this is for launching the browser within Android emulator, right? And then we're going to type a keyword in search text box. 
so for that driver dot as same as selenium so find element by and we have something called name so in the name you can pass the queue which we just found oops right and then you can return it to a web element if you want to right and then you can perform the txt search dot send keys of execute automation right or you can also do to perform a button click instead of just returning to a web element and then performing the operation you can directly perform the operation in the identified control itself so this we can do like this driver dot find element by name and here the name i'm going to pass bt and g right so instead of returning it to a web element i'm just directly going to perform the click operation using the methods return itself because the return type of this web element find element by name is actually web element right so i can directly call the method click awesome so let's save the code and then just try to execute this test again my app is up and running my emulator is up and running so i don't have to worry about this so i'm just going to run the test ng test and we'll see what happens all right the browser is just opened and it's just typing the execute automation as you can see there and it just clicked the search button as well and our test got passed so this is very very simple suppose your browser loading is very slow or sometime your website is very slow to load in the browser then you can use implicit or explicit wait statements so for that i have just added a simple code so i'm just going to copy this code and i'm just going to paste it right here so about explicit and implicit wait statements you can always go back to the execute automation channels in youtube and there we have a playlist called selenium tidbits where you can watch the implicit and explicit weights how the functionality works etc so for that let me open the chrome so hey kotana open chrome sure opening google chrome and then I'm going to navigate to the YouTube. And here you can see we have something called explicit and implicit weight in Selenium web driver, right? So here you can learn how to do this Selenium's implicit and explicit weight statements in a greater detail. Okay, so I'm just going to use the same code. And instead of waiting for this control to appear, you can use the explicit weight and then pass the element right so this way the code will still work or you can use the implicit weight as well right so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day